Good morning, it is March 28th, and this is a bonus video for you. I am at Tonto National Monument, and I am doing a short trail. It's about a mile long, and anyways, it's gonna go up to some cliff dwellings. So, this is gonna be fun. I mean, we got the wildflowers, so what more do you want? <laughs> oh, it's gorgeous. And there's hardly anybody here, I'm surprised. It's an interpretive trail, of course, so I'll tell you all about it. How lovely that it's paved, even. <laughs> Isn't this gorgeous? Roosevelt Lake is 22.4 miles long, has 128 miles of shoreline, and its maximum depth is 188 feet. And the original dam construction was 1903 to 1911, and the remodel was completed in 1996. As people moved west and settled in the Arizona Territory, a need for a reliable water source was evident. Theodore Roosevelt Dam was constructed at the confluence of the Salt River and Tonto Creek, creating a reservoir that controls flooding and stores water for Arizona residents to this day. The Apache Trail was originally constructed by the Bureau of Reclamation to bring materials from Mesa, Arizona to the Roosevelt Dam construction site. Beginning in 1916, the Southern Pacific Railroad marketed the Apache Trail as a tourist automobile trip. Visitors were driven from Globe, Arizona to Apache Junction, Arizona on the Apache Trail. During the overnight trip, visitors explored the Tonto Cliff dwellings. On December 19, 1907, President Theodore Roosevelt signed Proclamation 787, creating Tonto National Monument. Tonto was the ninth national monument designated under the Antiquities Act. Here I quote, Whereas two prehistoric ruins of ancient cliff dwellings situated upon public lands of the United States are of great ethnological, scientific, and educational interest, and appears that the public interests would be promoted by reserving these relics of a vanished people as a national monument. By the time Theodore Roosevelt left office in 1909, he had created 55 national bird sanctuaries and wildlife refuges, 150 national forests, 18 national monuments, and five national parks. In all, he protected approximately 230 million acres of public land. By visiting your public lands, Theodore Roosevelt's vision continues to inspire new generations. The cliff dwellings are the most visible remnants of the Salado culture today. However, in the 1300s, people lived in several types of structures throughout the Tonto Basin. Prehistoric people moved into the area along established trade routes, bringing with them diverse ideas, skills, art, and architectural styles. Similar to today, daily tasks were performed as a community. Together, the Salado raised families, gathered resources, and created or traded items that included colorful textiles and pottery. Trade routes are located along waterways throughout the world. In the past, one of the trade routes used to obtain supplemental and specialized items was along the Salt River. The Salado exported polychrome pottery, intricate weavings, and raw materials. One of their exports was cotton, which continues to be a major export item for Arizona. Trade networks brought abalone shells from the Pacific coast, copper bells from northern Mexico, scarlet macaws from Mesoamerica, and artistic products from surrounding communities. Remnants of these trade items contribute to archaeologists' understanding of prehistoric relationships. I just love their stonework. Oh, amazing craftsmanship. In May 1883, Adolf Bandelier wrote, it is a perfect house, but small. I found many metates, three of which were perfect. The manos are small, so as to work in the groove. Many of the roofs are perfect. They are of vigas. Above them are either splinters or round ticks of ocotillo. Above it reeds, and then two and a half inches of mud. The floors, as far as visible, are black. There is some pottery about, handsomely painted. I found an old sandal, much fragmentary basket work, rope, twine, and many corn cobs. They are of the small variety, and I found one small piece of obsidian. The position of the Pueblo is admirable for security and observation. 
Angeline Mitchell, the first school teacher in the Tonto Basin area, is accredited with the first written record of this cliff dwelling in the year 1880. She describes in her journal the magnificent structures she and her students explored, noting the construction style of the dwellings and imagining the lives of the ancient people who called this place home. It seems so strange to be chatting and laughing so gaily in a house built unknown centuries ago by people unlike us in appearance, but who had known joy and grief, pleasure and pain, same as our race of today who knows them, and who had laughed, cried, sung, danced, married and died, mourned or rejoiced away in this once populous town or castle or whatever one would call it. So I'm actually allowed to go in here. Wow. Oh, this is so neat. Oh, this is a guard room, it's called. What a view they had. Just tremendous. This room would house five to seven people. Oh. When you go up there too, you gotta see a matate. A matate? Yes, on the, when you go up, it'll be on the ground right by that wall. What is that? Um, it's a grinding stone. Oh. You see, you see, it'll make sense. They would have used it to grind their corn or their mesquite. Oh, that's flour. what it's called. A matate. Matate. All right. Thank you. What a beautiful, cool area. Oh, there's the matate. Just amazing. So like three different families would live in each compartment. So they must have had to haul their water a long ways. Probably from, um, there's a spring at the end of the parking lot. There. Oh, okay. So the water probably would have come up that canyon. Wow. There. Such a... So we saw there was some graffiti. That was from the 1920s. Is that right? Some, some of the carving in the wood that all would have been done before the park got control of the property. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's vandals even back then. Hey? Yeah, and, and now it's historic, so it's kind of... Okay. You know, <laughs> Give an indication Good of like, and what bad. people like that. Yeah. Well, you notice we have the, the wire over the doorways. Yeah. All that wood over the doorways is authentic. Wow. But we put the wire there because we have mountain mines in the area and we don't want a mountain mine. It would, well, that would be a perfect place for a mountain mine. To yeah. To raise so, Their own home. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't want to have to come up here and wake her up in the morning and <laughs> tell her to get out. <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's cool. I thought it was for bad people or something. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Oh, I met the nicest volunteer lady. She said I could film and she was so friendly. Oh, this was a great hike. You just got to drink in this view. Wowzers.
Wow, that was just fabulous. The Salado people quit living there around 1400 and they don't know what happened to them. They just vanished. Anyways, there's an upper cliff dwelling too, but you have to have a guided ranger and they only do it three or four times a week. Anyway, I, I'm glad with what I saw, it was fabulous. Can recommend this place.